After the Duel of Harlem, Bruce Banner fled from America, leaving Betty Ross behind for her own safety, and changed his focus from suppressing his anger to controlling it so the transformations would occur only when he desired them. By 2011, he had left North America but suffered another transformation during his travels, which caught the attention of those in pursuit. With the Bifrost gone, following Thor's battle with Loki, Asgardians were no longer able to keep the peace throughout the Nine Realms, which descended into chaos and war. Back on Earth, James Rhodes worked out a deal with the American government, allowing Tony Stark to keep all his technology, so long as War Machine remained on loan to the Department of Defense. But Tony knew the armor his friend wore was not designed for his body, and so built a new suit specifically for Rhodes, so that War Machine could go out to help the people of the world, while Iron Man remained in New York, working on other projects like the construction of Stark Tower, to be powered entirely by the Arc Reactor. War Machine then set off, focusing much of his attention on defeating Ten Rings terrorist cells around the world. In the Arctic, S.H.I.E.L.D. recovered the body of Steve Rogers, finding him cryogenically preserved in ice, and so revived him, preparing a set to simulate the 1940s in New York City. However, when Steve Rogers awoke, he became suspicious of his surroundings after hearing a baseball game on the radio, which was a repeat of one he attended. Becoming hostile, Steve attacked the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents present and escaped the set, running into the streets of New York where he realized everything was different than he remembered. Nick Fury then found him and explained he'd been asleep for nearly 70 years, sending him to stay at a cabin in the woods they called The Retreat while he settled into his new reality. As S.H.I.E.L.D. continued to research all of the new technology made available through contact with other worlds, many of their resources remained devoted to studying the Tesseract, with Project Pegasus arranging for Dr. Eric Selvig to go to the joint Dark Energy Mission Facility in the Mojave Desert, where he was joined by Hawkeye, assigned to protect the item and keep watch over the Doctor. In 2012, Joseph and Lucy Bauer found the Dark Hole, a powerful book of spells created in the Hell Dimension, a place of darkness beyond the Earth Plane. Using the Darkhold to make incredible scientific discoveries, the Bowers brought in several of their colleagues from Momentum Labs and built a quantum particle generator able to create matter from nothing. Learning about the book behind their discoveries, one of the scientists, Eli Morrow, became concerned and grew obsessed with it, prompting Joseph to hire the 5th Street Locos to eliminate the problem. Seeing Eli's car driving down the street, the gang attacked, however it was actually Eli's nephew in the vehicle, causing an accident that killed Robbie Reyes and left his younger brother Gabe disabled. Yet just before his death, Robbie heard a voice asking him if he wanted another chance at life with the ability to take vengeance against those who'd harmed him, to which he eagerly replied yes. The voice belonged to the Spirit of Vengeance, who escaped from the Hell Dimension and now moved through different host bodies, choosing to inhabit those who'd been wronged in life so they might unleash their fury upon the wicked together. After embodying Johnny Blaze for some time, the Spirit of Vengeance transferred into Robbie Reyes, turning him into the new Ghost Rider, a being with a flaming skull, increased strength, healing, and resistance, able to imbue weapons with fire. Eli Morrow, furious over what happened to his nephews, beat Joseph Bauer into a coma and used the quantum particle generator to turn all the other scientists into spirits, trapping them in special boxes. Eli was then arrested and jailed for attempted manslaughter against Joseph Bauer. Though Project Tahiti proved successful in curing the life-threatening illnesses of several test subjects, they suffered severe damage to their mental state, forcing S.H.I.E.L.D. to erase their memories and give them new lives. Seeing the consequences of this dangerous experimentation, Phil Coulson recommended shutting down the project, but was overruled by Nick Fury. Sent by S.H.I.E.L.D. on a mission to Russia, Black Widow foiled a Ten Rings plan to threaten world peace by setting off a missile on the border with North Korea. After years of research, Aldrich Killian found some success experimenting with extremists to turn disabled veterans into loyal super soldiers. However, when Chad Davis, one of the men using the substance, died in an explosion that killed several others, Aldrich Killian decided to spin the situation in his favor, hiring an actor named Trevor Slattery to pose as the Mandarin, leader of the Ten Rings terrorist organization. After another explosion caused by one of the soldiers who took an extra high dose of the dangerous substance, the fake Mandarin took responsibility, allowing Killian to deflect attention away from his involvement and profit from a heightened sense of danger by creating super soldiers for the government's war on terror. Far from the Earth, sitting on his throne, the Titan Thanos, one of the most powerful beings in the universe, learned that the Tesseract was on Earth, eager to get his hands on the Space Stone within. 
Already, he had the Mind Stone in his possession and ruled over a vast army of Chitari and Outriders. Yet his ultimate goal was to collect all six Infinity Stones, so he might enact his plan for reshaping the universe. Making a deal with Loki of Asgard, Thanos provided him with a scepter powered by the Mind Stone and tasked him to retrieve the Tesseract in exchange for a Chitari army he could use to conquer Earth. Using the scepter, he was able to activate the Tesseract and transport himself to its location, arriving in the joint Dark Energy Mission Facility, where he killed a number of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and took control over the minds of others, including Dr. Selvig and Hawkeye. Now under Loki's direct control, Hawkeye shot Director Fury before they departed with the Tesseract. Back on Asgard, Frigga sensed her son Loki was still alive, informing Odin and Thor. Although the project was abandoned in favor of a weapons development program, Nick Fury, having survived the encounter with Loki, reactivated the Avengers Initiative, gathering together the prospective agents and super beings they previously considered for the team. Fury sent Coulson to call in Black Widow, who was hesitant to abandon her current mission, but did so at once when she learned Hawkeye was in danger. Coulson then contacted Tony Stark, while Natasha Romanoff was sent to retrieve Bruce Banner in India, and Director Fury spoke with Steve Rogers. Though Tony Stark remained behind to go over the information left by Coulson, he soon joined the others on a S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier to discuss the mission, with only War Machine unable to attend, as he was busy fighting terrorists on the other side of the world. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Saxus the Kensor Aurelius, Sir Bob of the Bowie, Tio the Iron Banker, and Barachado. If you'd like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to see more.